Good morning. Welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading people to experience God's love, to know Jesus Christ, and to grow in his image. My name is Sherry Clifton. I'm one of the pastors here at Bethany, and I'm delighted that you are worshiping with us this morning. I want to encourage you to go to our church's website when you get a chance where you can register your attendance. You can find ways that you can stay connected to us at Bethany. You can submit your prayer requests for us to pray with you and for you. And you can also find ways that you can continue supporting the church with your financial gifts. In this service of worship, we worship together in song and in silence and with Holy Scripture. I invite you as we begin this time of worship to take a deep breath to welcome God's spirit with you. Offer yourself to receive the gift of this time for you with God. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you for the gift of this time of worship. We ask that as we offer ourselves to you, you would pour out your spirit upon us that as we seek to bless you, you would bless us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. As I read this text again, I invite you, if you're comfortable doing so, to close your eyes, to listen for what God might be offering to you in this text to listen for a word or a phrase or an image that speaks to you where you are this day and hold on to that. Therefore, 
since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. As you continue to hold on to that word or phrase or image that God offered to you in this scripture, I invite you to listen one more time. And this time, as you are able, offer your response to God. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today in the life of the church, we celebrate All Saints Day, and I want to invite you in joining me in a litany of praise for the saints. Give thanks to God who invites us to share in the inheritance of the saints. For in Christ, all the fullness of God is pleased to dwell. In Christ, all things in heaven and on earth are created. In Christ, we are knit together in one communion and fellowship. Christ is the head of the church. We are the mystical body of Christ. God grant us grace to follow his blessed saints. Let us share in the godly living of those who truly love God. Let us bind ourselves to God. May God's kingdom reign among us. As I call the names of some of the Bethany saints who have died in this last year, I invite you to join me in giving thanks for their faithful witness. And I invite you to name silently or aloud saints in your own life who have died in this past year. Let us remember and give thanks. For the blessing of the Bethany saints who go before us, we give thanks and praise to the Lord, our God. 
for the life and fellowship of Peter Argus, Gail Barron, Connie Bone, David Benorden, Noel Ann Brown, Bill Brubeck, Betty Calmes, Sylvia Campbell Newcomb, Will Flam, Skip Fowler, Barry Green, Bobby Green, John Hassey, Barbara Hemphill, Melissa Housewright, John Humphrey, Ken James, Bob Jameson, Jim Jones, Betsy King, Grace Kitely, Jane Levy, David Lewis, James Locker, Ray Majors, Milton Mallory, Mary Louise Matson, Jim Miller, Rick Moffat, Michael Murley, Harold Pack, Barbara Ruclo, Jim Scott, Lana Smith, Elaine Snyder, Morris Thompson, Art Ulbrich, Bob Unger. Loving God, as we worship today, we remember the saints in our lives, the ones we have named, and those we now name before you. We give you thanks for allowing our lives to be connected to theirs, for revealing your grace to us through them for the gift of loving them and being loved by them. We miss them, and we are grateful that in your spirit we are not completely without them. Thank you that love isn't bound by time and space, that nothing can separate us from your love, and in that promise we can know that our loved ones are held in that same space of love in which you hold us. As we remember and give thanks today, please comfort us in that tender place of grief. Embrace us when the tears fall in sadness. Sit with us in the remembering. We pray for healing and hope, courage and wisdom to live our lives fully and freely in your grace. We pray that while we remain on this earth, we would seek every day to be more like Jesus, who loved with mercy, kindness, and compassion, who loved by giving of himself, who loved by meeting people where they are and welcoming them into relationship. We come today aware of the brokenness of our world, the anxiety in our nation, the weariness of our beings as the pandemic continues to unfold. And all we can do is pray. All we can do is surrender our wills to yours, believing in the midst of the struggle that you are still present and at work in us, through us, with us, and for us, for the world. Renew our hearts and our minds, Lord, and breathe new life into us that we might pray with confidence in your goodness, your faithfulness, 
your steadfast love, confidence in the promise of the resurrection. As we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second scripture today comes from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children." As you're comfortable doing so this morning, I invite you to close your eyes to take a deep breath, to welcome God's presence with you as you continue breathing deeply. 
just be present with God as we consider this text. A new heaven, a new earth, no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. God is making all things new. This is coming. But right now, we know death, we know pain, we know crying. Right now, we know suffering and loss. Right now, we are weary and anxious. Right now, there is so much unknown. Right now, we're in between. We're in between what has been, what is, and what will come. And in this space of in between, God meets us, sits with us, sees us, hears us, receives us, embraces us. In this in between, God catches the tears that fall. God comforts us in the grief and holds the pain that we are feeling. I wonder what in between looks like, sounds like, feels like for you right now. As you continue breathing deeply, as you are still in God's presence, can you express that to God? Allow God to simply re receive all of that, all of what your in-between looks like, sounds like, feels like. Allow God to simply receive it so that you don't carry it alone. Allow the love that encompasses all the saints to wrap its arms around you in these moments. As you continue to simply sit in God's presence in this in-between time, I invite you to receive this blessing. It's called Enduring Blessing. It's by Jan Richardson. What I really want to tell you is to just lay this blessing on your forehead, on your heart. Let it rest in the palm of your hand because there is hardly anything this blessing could say, any word it could offer to fill the hollow. Let this blessing work its way into you with its lines that hold nearly unspeakable lament. Let this blessing settle into you with its hope more ancient than knowing. Hear how this blessing has not come alone, how it echoes with the voices of those who accompany you, who attend you in every moment, who continually whisper this blessing to you. Hear how they do not cease to walk with you even when the dark is deepest. Hear how they encompass you always, breathing this blessing to you, bearing this blessing to you still.
as we continue to accept that we are in between what was and what will be, let us hear this word of scripture for us again. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. As we come to the end of our time of worship today, I want to encourage you, especially if you are missing the saints in your lives today, to be kind and gentle with yourself in the remembering, to light a candle if that helps in the remembering, to call their name, to tell stories about their lives, to give thanks for how their lives have impacted your life, and to hold on to the hope and the promise that God has received them, and that one day God receives us as well, that we will be reunited with all the saints one day when all things are made new. And as we sit in this time in between what was and what will be, 
I encourage you to let God be your constant companion on the journey. To know that you are not alone. Even as we go from this time of worship, you're not alone. So as we close this time, receive the blessing of the assurance of God's love for you. Receive and go in the peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive and go in the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.